21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. What are your top strategies for he helping authors make more than 10,000 per year from their books? Well, well, Martin, I'm glad you asked me that question. I will, I'll give you top, my top three strategies for helping authors to generate 10,000. Dollars per month or even week or day. So the first strategy is that you have to have other products and services. So to make $10,000 a month with just your book, and let's just say that you're selling it through your own website, that means you're keeping more of your profit. Well, you must understand that you have to sell, let's just say on average, you're making about $15. You have to sell 667 books every single month to make $10,000 if it's $15 profit. That's a lot of selling. And so what I teach authors to do is that you take your book and you leverage that so that you can build multiple streams of income. It doesn't matter if you are selling coaching services, maybe you're selling additional products and services, but learn how to turn your book into multiple streams of income. The second strategy that I give to authors for being able to turn your book into $10,000 a month is you have to market yourself, right? So the way that I market myself is I don't necessarily market the selling of the book. I market the transformation that I help people with. Right? So as you know, I, I you know, I help authors and future authors make money. So I might do workshops or webinars where I'm saying, Hey, authors, let me show you how to make more money with your book. And so I utilize these webinars and then I send all of those webinars out to individuals who are on my lead, you know, my lead list, my database. Um, I'll go into different groups where I can provide value and invite them to join my webinar. But I understand that many people, they're not really looking for just a book title or things like that. They're looking for a specific transformation. Now, when I'm doing my webinar, I then use my book as a way to kind of build that leverage and influence in the space that I say that I'm training in. So again, you got to market yourself guys. And that's honestly, I have so many different ways to market yourself in your business, but that's just one webinars and inviting people to be a part of your webinar. I will say the third thing that I'll give you as far as a strategy in regards to helping authors generate over $10,000 a month is that you must treat your book like a business, right? So a lot of times, you know, Martin, I see people, um, they come out with the book and maybe, you know, they, they went on Amazon, which I teach, stop selling your books on Amazon as well, but that's another conversation, but they get on Amazon or they go and post on social media and they think, okay, this is me. I'm promoting my business. I'm marketing my business. But when we think about marketing back in the day, like years ago, right? There were so many ways that you had to really invest into your business to market. And so if you really want your book to pay you like a business, you have to treat it like a business. If you want to make $10,000 a month, that's not little money. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever you are making in your country, whatever that stands for, that's not little money. So you have to really sit down and be strategic and treat this like a business. So I teach my students to schedule out, you know, schedule out their days. You figured out what the multiple streams of income are going to be. You've now created a platform so that you can present the program and the services and things like that. But now you really have to schedule out your days. I, I believe that those that fail to plan, plan to fail. So every single day, on my calendar, I know I'm very strategic in regard to what I plan to do. And if I say I'm going to make $10,000 a month, I know that, okay, I have a package that sells for $500. I'm going to leverage my book. I know how many people I need to present to on a weekly basis in order to be able to generate that weekly or even monthly income goal. So you got to treat your book like a business. You have to market yourself and your book should turn into multiple streams of income. Let's go more into uh, Book Profits Club. How can it help authors achieve success? 
Oh, so thank you for asking me about my baby. So I've been in the book writing world. I won't necessarily call myself a publisher because I like to coach on using your books too, but I've been in the book writing world since 2014. And one of the things I noticed is that like when people would finish their books and you know, everybody be excited, they're marketing, you know, for maybe a month, possibly two, I'd go back and check them out and I don't see them talking about their book anymore. And so I'm like, well, man, what happened? And so I started to do surveys and ask people things. And I realized that 80% of most authors, like they don't know how to make money because they don't know mar about marketing. They don't know how to promote themselves and things like that. So in 2019, instead of only showing you how to be an author, my mission has changed. I wanna show authors how to be profitable. So Book Profits Club is all about teaching about promotion, profiting and performance. So we, you know, we always think about promoting and profiting, but the question is, are you also thinking about how does your book perform? Like when you go out there to events and you show people your book, are they asking you what it's, what your book is about? because maybe we might need to change a couple of things so that it performs better. Or when you're speaking on panels or if you're you know, on the media, how are you properly leveraging your book? So performance is a little bit different from profiting and promoting, but those are the three Ps that Book Profits Club teaches you about. Can you share some examples, uh, before and after examples? You spoke about tra transformation and transformation is very, very important in, um, coaching industry in uh, personal development industry. So it's not just about business, isn't it? Oh, no. I mean, well, if I could be honest, like if you don't focus on helping someone get from A to B, or if that's not a passion of yours, it's very difficult to be in business. When you think about any kind of product or service that people provide, the goal or the reason why people buy it is because it's gonna help them solve something, right? So a person has a challenge, they have a problem, they have something and they're looking for a solution. And so one thing that I think is important to remember is that when you do get into this world of entrepreneurship, number one, make sure it's something that you truly care about. Like, like, you know, if you want to help people to lose weight, make sure it's something you really like doing yourself or you care about it. If you want to help, you know, people to learn how to be better organized, make sure it's something you care about. Because I think with social media today, it's so easy to get kind of caught up in the hype. And we're looking at what other people are teaching and what other people are talking about. We're like, oh man, let me, let me go over here and teach people how to do Airbnbs and not realizing there's so much work in the back end that you may not want to do right you may not want to clean houses or you may not want to have to deal with reviews and all of these different things and so i think it's so important that we do understand when it comes to entrepreneurship the only way that it's easier for you to stick and stay it's got to be something that you're passionate about number one um what do you love to do uh, really, what do you love doing? What is it that you do without even thinking? You know, I, I know that you were telling me where you are at and we're going to Italy um, in, um, in a few months and we're gonna be taking a cooking class. Well, I'm not the best cook, right? But there are some people who know how to make a, a meal with very little, like they're very good at it why not be able to create a business teaching people how to do that busy entrepreneurs who don't have a lot of money so you got to think about what you're passionate about and then number two you got to make sure guys that this is something that people want because just because you're passionate about don't mean the marketplace wants to buy it so connect it to the problem create a solution and that's how you win big in business what is your passion my passion i mean if i were to visualize it my passion is being is knowing that my purpose here in this world or my existence in this world has changed someone's life i've always you know when i was younger uh they told me that i was bossy but that <laughs> i don't know that i was bossy i just was one who always liked to teach something so like if i learned how to do something like i was quickly like trying to tell someone and pose on them like this is what you need to do and but as i've grown older i've learned to really kind of be in a space of when someone wants it taria then you give it but i really love being able to teach something somebody something and then their eyes open up like wow will I always be in books no the books is just a vehicle right it's 
it's just a vehicle. Um, but I believe that one of my spiritual gifts is counsel, which is also coaching and teaching. So I love teaching. Um, and the fact that I can get paid for it, man, that's a blessing. But I would probably do this regardless if I didn't or not. Um, it's just unfortunately I got bills. So if I could live for free, I would do this for free, but I can't. <laughs> You have so great vibes, so amazing energy. What's your daily routine? Do you eat specific food? What about sport activities? Meditations? Very good. So I look. I have to do better about my physical fitness. I will tell you that, but I do wake up um, every morning. I actually have a group that we meet every morning, um, national, international. We have people from all over the world. It's called Release and Restore. And that's a 30 minute meeting where we, we wake up, we read a uh, scripture from the Bible. We also have a journal and we, we really reflect on things that allow us to either start or finish our day, depending upon where you are really strong. And I know for a fact that that's what gets me on the track of excitement, of gratitude for the day, because we start our day off with positivity. And then I also, depending upon what day of the week it is, we have team meetings. So I do have staff. And so I make sure that my staff stays on point so that we can meet. Now, the cool thing that we do with our staff is that we also read personal self-development books. So on top of me having them read them, I'm reading them. I, I truly believe that you have to really, really engulf yourself into personal self-development if you want to be able to really grow your business, grow your life. I mean, not just your business and your finances, but everywhere. Now, another thing that I also do, so I schedule up my days, as I was saying, I, I have a calendar. So every day may differ depending upon what's going on. I am doing better at physical fitness. I went and bought a bike um, during the, the pandemic. You know, we were stuck in the house. So a lot of people bought bikes. And so that allowed me to get my physical fitness in. So I love riding my bike. I also love to dance, Martin, believe it or not. is one of my favorite things to do so i might not be doing squats and push-ups and things like that but i do make time to dance to music that i love um outside of that i like to eat good food so a combination of definitely making sure that i'm intentional about the food that i eat i do divulge in a glass of wine or two every single other day every single other day but outside of that i'm very intentional i do make sure that i'm getting in those greens drinking that water and i like to enjoy my life um i, I don't believe in you know, team no sleep. I know that some people live by that principle, but I believe in balance. You know, I believe that, you know, you take time to enjoy the fruits of your labor and identify also what makes you happy. If buying a certain car, you know, like what you might see on social media or jewelry or clothes is not what you want to do, that's okay. If it is what you want to do, then that's great. But make sure by all means, that when you are waking up every day and taking action, that you're taking action to the things that you desire and not what the world tells you that you should desire. And that will keep you energized and motivated and excited about your life. And you have a nonprofit organization as well. I do. So I'm going to be honest. Uh, listen, we took a little bit of a break with the uh, nonprofit, but we're opening it back up. I'll, let me tell you why. This will be a really, really good tip. So I don't know how um, I know that you have international trademarks, right? So the reason why we took a little bit of a break is because my company, Urban CEO, which stands for unapologetic, real, bold, action oriented and nonconforming. We were going through some legal challenges, right? But won't 
this is this this is the blessing. Let me tell you something. I trademarked my company. So soon as I started it, this is some legal advice for y'all. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm telling you, as soon as I started it, because I knew this brand would be really, really big, I trademarked it. And so long story short, another company was like, whoa, well, we don't want you to use the name. But I trademarked it first. So for almost a year, y'all, I just want y'all to know, I was going through that battle, but we ended up winning because I legally protected myself. If you are listening to the sound of my voice, if you're building a big movement, if you're building something that you know is going to be here forever and ever, y'all, we have to stop doing business like it's a hobby. Register your businesses, and if it's a great name, you need to trademark it. You might need to, you know, get the uh, the counsel from a lawyer. But praise God, I trademarked it. So, uh, starting next year, we're gonna launch things back up. So I created this nonprofit because. If you're anything like me, I bootstrapped my business, right? I rolled the sleeves up, worked hard, and I didn't really understand everything that was available to me. There's so many opportunities out here for funding and for training and coaching, and I had no idea. I mean, I remember thinking that, you know, here in the United States, we have it called EIN, right? Getting an EIN, I used to think that was complicated when all you have to do is just go on a simple website, takes two minutes and you get an EIN, but because we're out here bootstrapping and hustling, we have no idea. So I remember one time, Martin, I went to this uh, meeting about scaling your business and they were using the, like this terminology that I was like, I don't even know what they're talking about. I don't come from corporate. I don't understand these acronyms. And it was so overwhelming that I just sat there quiet, didn't ask a question because I didn't want to look stupid. And I, I didn't take action. And so I wanted to create a nonprofit where you would have individuals who maybe were not from such affluent you know, areas, or maybe they didn't you know, grow in the corporate space. So they don't understand a lot of the terminology, but they don't want to feel silly, but they do want to grow their business. And so that's what we did. We created the nonprofit for unintimidating um, opportunities for you to learn how to scale and take your businesses next level. And who was your support? Your family, community, network? So this is a, I think this is important to know this as well. Um, several years ago, I realized that your family and friends are not your clients, right? Not even necessarily your support group. If you happen to be blessed to have friends and family who do support you, who maybe come to your events, who buy your products and services, I need y'all to know that's a blessing. But a lot of times what we do is we start, you know, getting into the space of if my friends and family won't support me, or why is it that you have people who don't know you who support you and your friends and family won't? Because God didn't call them to be your clients. They called them to be your friends and family. So how do my friends and family support me? They allow me to dis disconnect from business and let my hair down and be myself, right? So I don't talk business to my friends and family unless they ask me. But yes, I have a coach. In fact, I have two different coaches. I have a coach that helped me with my public speaking. I also have a coach that's helping me with uh, with putting together my systems. So I've invested into coaches, right? Um, and then of course my clients are like an amazing support system. I mean, honey, when they give me testimonials and share how, hey, I applied this and this has changed my life, that's one of the biggest blessings you could ever receive to know that something that you actually did or showed has helped somebody else. So I compartmentalize my support system. But when I say support, don't don't confuse that with, you know, everybody's in the business or everybody's buying my products and services. And most of all, I am a woman of faith. God is my number one support system because I know that he'll never put too much on us that we cannot handle. Thank you. I'm a lady who loves tattoos, okay? So if you follow me on social media, you might get a glimpse of this huge tattoo that I have on my back. And it is a tattoo, it's, it's a combination of stuff, but the main thing is a tattoo of an oak tree. And I want to share this story with you. And I always like to use this as a great analogy so that we all know that we are all building oak trees here.
right? Now, the challenge with an oak tree, and if anybody knows the story of the mustard seed or having mustard seed faith is that it starts off as a small seed. And when you plant an oak tree in the ground, depending upon the environment that you plant it in, it can actually start looking like other trees. In fact, if you plant an oak tree beside shrubs, when it starts to grow, sometimes you might confuse it with a shrub. Now, the challenge with the shrub is that a shrub, you can take it up out the ground and place it anywhere. You can just put it wherever. And typically shrubs are designed just for the look, the aesthetic. They cut them up so that they can look good, but they never grow beyond their size. What I love so much about oak trees is that oak trees, first of all, the roots can be as deep and as wide as the branches that you may see on the top. They grow to be some of the longest living trees in the world, hundreds and hundreds of years old. They grow to be hundreds hundreds of feet wide. But what you must also understand is that the oak tree is one of the strongest standing trees out there. There's different versions of them, but when a storm comes, oak trees don't fall over because the roots have grown wide. Now, what are the roots for you? See, the roots for you as entrepreneurs, guys, are the days that you've been out here marketing and grinding and talking to people and being told no and, and being laughed at where other people are saying, why are you selling that? Why are you doing that? See, these are all the roots that you guys are building. And you must understand this is what people don't see. See, the people don't see the roots, but they only see the branches. That is the fruit from the roots. And so you got to understand, y'all, when you look at an oak tree, think about what it had to go through, what all the, the roots that it had to grow first before you would even see the fruits from the roots. And so I always like to remind people, look, y'all, we out here building oak trees. Don't look for things to happen overnight. Don't confuse your life with somebody else because they're building a shrub. They're out here just looking good for the aesthetic, looking good for the outside. You're building something that not only will stand the test of times, but be able to create something that's going to build through generations over generations over generations. So that, that's my little story of the oak tree. And I love, I love them so much. So if you ever are out and about and you're driving around and you happen to see a beautiful oak tree that is standing by itself, which by the way, the biggest tend to be alone. But if you look at that oak tree, I want you to remember that story. And I want you to think on the fact that you too are building an oak tree. Your roots right now are what is taking place. Those are growing. And so don't confuse your fruits with your roots. Thank you. So guys, this is the dealio. One of the things that I offer to you guys is my masterclass where I teach you three mistakes that actually keep authors from generating over $10,000 a month. but we dig deeper and it comes with some additional goodies. So if you want to gain access to this free masterclass, all you have to do is go to www.10kbook.com. Again, that is www.10kbook.com. That's the number one, the number zero, 10K for $10,000. So I look forward to seeing you at the masterclass and make sure once you get there, I'm gonna send you additional details, social media and all that. Hit me up. I can't wait to connect with you. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskorik.